All right, so we got some P-bars here. We got some of my Power Monkey P-bars. I don't think people take advantage enough of having something like this to work with. Um, gymnastics, we use P-bars all the time. It's a great static apparatus to get comfortable positions before you get to something with unstable like rings. So if you have a chance to work on some parallel bars, take advantage of it. Uh, what we're going to be working on here, first couple variations, we're going to be really trying to key in on some strength skills to get used to some of the positions that we're going to be working on when we get into that back roll. Right, trying to keep the rings nice and close is not something easy to do. It's generally the part that's most difficult for people to kind of get past that vertical and keep those rings still and close to the body. So what allows that to happen? It allows you to be comfortable when you're kind of in that bottom of, this, uh, of the dip position. So that's what we're going to touch on right away. All right? So whenever we talk about bottom part of the dip, I always kind of equate it to, uh, I've been lucky enough to do a lot of work with uh, Chad Vaughn on the lift, Olympic lifting side, and he always talks about the importance of building strength and, and getting comfortable with the bottom part of the squat. And it's something that I've slowly started to kind of appreciate for uh, the importance of on the lifting side, and I see something just as important with the bottom part of the dip. You want to build comfort and strength and flexibility in that deltoid and pec at the bottom part of the dip. All right? It's going to apply not only to what we're going to be talking about on back and rolls, but things like muscle ups as well. All right? So the first little variation is basically just trying to find where your baseline is in terms of getting to the bottom, all right? So we're going to get up to support and just try to lower down as far as we can possibly go where you're still feeling comfortable in the support position and just try to hold that position for a little while, all right? So I'll just show you what it looks like. Again, nice solid um, support position to start and then just lower down as far as you can go. Keep that head up. If you need to bend those knees fine, try to keep your hips open. Just trying to get to a position where as low as you possibly can. This is where we're trying to build strength and comfort. All right? Let's, let's give it a try. That's fine. Good, yeah, nice and low. Awesome, that's great, that's great. So what we're really seeing here is, you know, your shoulder is right on top of your hand. That's essentially where we're trying to build that strength, all right? If you're thinking about back kip, that back rolling action, if you don't have a ton of momentum, you have to be comfortable keeping those rings in close when you're that level. All right? Be able to build a strength on something static will actually start to develop before you actually go to the rings. So if somebody has limited flexibility here and they can only get to here, that makes it that much harder. But what happens? Yeah, what happens if someone can't get down? Right? So that range becomes, instead of you being able to settle in at a very low position, a position where you feel strong and comfortable, what happens is you have to get up a lot higher. So you have to, you're requiring yourself a ton more momentum, a ton more energy to be uh, expended to get into a position where you feel comfortable, right? So you're making it a ton more difficult on yourself if you don't feel comfortable and strong in one part of that day, right? So there's a lot of application when we're talking about really trying to cut down that range when we talk about muscle ups, cutting down that range of that turnover, and this allows you to do that. Is that cool? Well, so again, you'll see how it applies to that back of rolling action. The more we can do on P bars, we're trying to feel that, that bottom part of that support, the bottom part of that dip, it's going to apply a lot of stuff when you on rings. And the other thing I wanted to mention um, with the bottom part, so right now we're just doing holds. And holds are great. Because holds, you can, over time, you just start getting more comfortable, and it really will kind of open up um, that delta a little bit, that pec, so that flexibility will come into play. The other thing you can start doing is doing some different variations. You can obviously just do dips. You can just work on sets of 10, just working on that full range, completing that dip with that. It's locked out all on the top portion. The other thing that I've been incorporating a lot, taking kind of a page out of uh, uh, the lifting side, Chad and Mike Services up on the lifting side, their playbook is the tempo stuff. And I think it has great application to the gymnastics side as well. And what I mean by that is, you know, starting that support, take five, 10 seconds to get down to that bottom, hold that bottom for five, 10 seconds, and then explode back up. You don't have to do tons of reps, just work more on feeling every single inch of that downward action and comfortable with that bottom, feeling how strong you need to be to support yourself at that bottom, and then exploding back up. Slowly adding weight into that. Um, I'm doing it right now with, you know, 100 plus pounds, just working on, you know, the tempo stuff, trying to feel every inch of it, and making sure that that weight is actually pulling me through that bottom. Cool. cool. So you can see a little bit how it applies to what we're going to be touching on a little bit, and feel that kind of keeping it in close. If the, the P-bars are shoulder width apart, it's essentially exactly where the rings want to be as you come over that, that yeah. turnover action on the, the back row. Absolutely. Cool? Yeah. All right. 